Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to take another look at an example of Kirchhoff's laws. This one is going to be a little bit more challenging for us. It is still a single loop example, and what we're going to do here is travel around the loop in a clockwise direction, add up all the voltages. Of course, using Kirchhoff's laws, we know that they should add up to zero. We know that the sum of all the voltages around any loop in the circuit must always add up to zero. Let's start at A and go around the circuit. Notice that there are three voltage sources. Notice there's two resistors. This voltage source is not known, but we know that the voltage across this source is equal to twice the voltage drop across a 6 ohm resistor. Also notice that even though we're assuming the current is in a clockwise direction, the voltage drop across this resistor would indicate that the actual current is in the opposite direction. But again, that shouldn't really matter. We can choose the direction any way we like, and if the answer then comes out to be negative, we know that the assumed direction is actually the incorrect direction, and the real current is flowing in the opposite direction. All right, let's go ahead and sum up all the voltages. Going from A to B, we cross the 12 volt battery. From the negative end to the positive end, that's a 12 volt rise. Now we go across the resistor, 4 ohms times the current, that would be a minus 4 times I voltage drop. Whenever we cross a resistor in the direction of the assumed current, we assume a voltage drop. Here we have a voltage drop across this voltage source equal to minus 2 V sub naught. Minus 2 V sub naught. Now we have a voltage rise across this battery or this voltage source, so plus 4. And finally, even though we know that the actual voltage drop is from the negative end to the positive end in this direction, we're just going to assume the direction of the current is clockwise and therefore we assume a voltage drop 6 ohms times the current minus 6 times the current and that adds up to zero. A second equation that we can use to solve the problem because what we're trying to do here is solve for the current in the circuit and solve for the voltage across this voltage source. We're going to use Ohm's law I equals V over R to determine a relationship between the current and V sub naught using what's happening on this resistor here. We can see that the voltage drop across this resistor is V sub naught, but since we assume the current to be in this direction, that would cause this to be a voltage drop, and since it actually looks like it's a voltage rise, this therefore is equal to minus 6 V sub naught, that's the voltage drop across the resistor. It's, in essence, a voltage rise divided by the resistance. Oh, I'll hold it, hold it, hold it. Back up. So this is equal to the voltage across that. It is going to be a minus V sub naught. Why minus? Because we're assuming the current to be in this direction, which causes, which should make this a voltage drop, but instead it's a voltage rise, so we have to put a minus in there divided by the resistance, which is 6 ohms. Solving this for V sub naught, we can then see that V sub naught across the resistor is equal to minus 6 times I, which we can then substitute into our equation here. So we need to plug that right in there. That allows us to solve for the current. 12 minus 4 times I minus 2 times V sub naught, which is a minus 6I plus 4 minus 6i is equal to 0. Let's go ahead and get rid of the parentheses. 12 minus 4i plus 12i plus 4 minus 6i is equal to 0. Adding up all the currents on the left side, minus 4 plus 12 minus 6, that is 2i, and moving all the voltages or the numbers to the other side, that becomes a minus 12 and a minus 4 or 2i is equal to minus 16, or i is equal to minus 8 amps, dividing both sides by a 2. Now we know the current in the circuit, and notice the sign a negative 8 amps. We assume that that would be the case, that we would have a real current in the opposite direction because of the voltage drop that was in opposition to what we assumed when we had the current going in this direction. Now we can solve for the voltage across the voltage source, V sub naught is equal to minus 6 times I, and I is a minus 8 amps. Of course, this is a minus 6 ohms, let's just put minus 6 ohms here, and ohms times amps is your voltage, so therefore V sub naught is equal to 48 volts. So the solution is such that 
the voltage across this battery is a minus 48 volts. Notice from left to right the voltage drops across the source and here we know have, we have a voltage rise because we know the actual direction of the current, I actual, is equal to 8 amps in, whoa, I'll take that back. The, the current is actually in this direction. I actual is equal to a positive 8 amps if we assume a counterclockwise direction and it's a negative 8 amps if we assume a clockwise direction. And those are the answers for this particular problem.